So as a background, we know the X-rays was discovered in December of 19 or 1895, and immediately after that, chest imaging was the first thing people started looking at, uh, looking at the tuberculosis, you know, spots on the dark gray images. Uh, and since then, chest radiography has improved, and it still remained the mainstay of chest imaging, despite significant advances in uh, cross-sectional imaging. Uh, its main advantage is the speed at which we can acquire it and we can interpret it, and it is a low-cost and low-radiation exposure. So any patient, whether outpatient setting or inpatient, any patient who have symptoms in chest diseases or otherwise preoperative evaluation, they get chest radiographs. And portable chest radiography remains the main tool to monitor ICU patients. And uh, approximately 30 to 40% of all x-rays done in any department are chest radiographs. So despite all these advances, we were still not there till we saw these images. So dynamic digital imaging, imaging is basically you are evaluating or looking at the images which are moving. Patient is free breathing during the image acquisition. Uh, this allows not only the anatomic, but also physiologic changes over time when you look at the entire lung over the respiratory and cardiac cycles. And it can also improve the quality and specificity of diagnosis. If you are suspicious on static images, but once we see the rapidly mo moving chest radiographs, it can help you exclude or include a pathology. So briefly, uh, what it is, it uses a sequential uh, pulsed X-ray production from the machine, and then it goes through the patient at a distance of two meters from source to uh, the plate. We have a flat panel detector uh, which uh, takes the images and then we process it downward. So this is a kind of uh, complicated diagram here. Uh, so when the hand switch is on, when you're taking the patient, th there is the auto voice which was there. You can always modify it. And you keep pressing the hand switch for 20 seconds if you, that's your complete 20 second exposure. And you let the hand switch off at the end of 10, 20 seconds. And in between, the voice will be there, whether it is auto voice or you can record it, giving different instructions regarding breathing. What we started was just tidal breathing, just breathe normally, you know. And when we are doing a looking at the diaphragm, we will ask the patient to sniff in between and uh, then go from there. Uh, so basically, pulse, radiograph, pulse images, x-rays come from the generator, pass through the diaphragm, go to the flat panel detector. And uh, this is a small video showing how it is done. It's a standard PA view, right? The x-ray source is here, the plate is in the front. And the technologies keep pressing the on button. So there are instructions by auto voice, you know, to, to keep breathing. Once it is done, the technology will let it go after whatever assigned period of time it is. And then you got the images. Now, this is an extra step here in DDR. Rather than images, once they are acquired, go to directly to PACS, they have to go through a computer for post-processing. So there is some extra time which is required in between these two which can be sometimes a little troublesome if you have a very busy practice. So we have assigned, you know, if you are too busy, go ahead and you know, send patients to the regular unit too and then do some cases on this. Uh, it generates almost 300 images over a period of 20 seconds. So that's why this take little time to make them in a cine loop to play for you on eyesight. But once it's done, you will get all the images. You will get a sta static PA lateral and uh, the image with the motion, and then there are post-processes images. Now, post-processing can be a lot of things. You can either remove the bones, just like a dual energy radiograph, but you have the movement, and you can look at the you know, nodule in the right lung very clearly. Or you can uh, edge enhance it. It's called frequency enhancement where you can look at the bones and the sharp edges around the diaphragm and the cardiac silhouette. I think this image is maybe useful for looking at lines and tubes. You know, we have currently a sharper filter for those techniques. So these are the post-processing initial two images, but then you can do further evaluation. Uh, 
Now, changes in the pixel value of the lung is caused by differences in the X-ray transparency. So the lung density, when patient is breathing in and out, it changes. Anytime you breathe in, there is less attenuation of the X-rays, so lungs are black. When you breathe out, there's more density, it become more whiter. Similarly, during the cardiac cycle, when it's in the systole, there's more blood which is pumped to the lungs, so lung images are slightly whiter as compared to diastole. But these changes are not visible on a naked eye, so you cannot really determine what's going on. So that is why you have to have these images post-processed to look at the ventilation, then you will have can assign the color to look at the images. So when the patient has taken a deep breath, both the lungs are filled with this color. So if there is some kind of focal abnormality in the airflow, you might be able to detect it. Similarly, in the uh, airflow, this is the patient who is not taking a deep breath. Similar color mapping will be to the entire lung. So we can see if there is any kind of vascular issue, there will be deficiency of that color. So I think this is an area of research which, which have a lot of potential yeah, with a very simple technique. This is, remember, this is just from chest radiographs, nothing else. 